subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm yeshi chonzo Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday the 3rd of February. India to skip Beijing Olympics as China made Galwan soldier torch bearer says foreign ministry. IMF approves 1 billion US dollars loan tranche for cash strapped Pakistan. And Kabul bakery donates bread as millions in Afghanistan suffer extreme hunger. And now for all the details. The Indian envoy in China will not attend the opening and closing ceremony of the Beijing Winter Olympics, India's foreign ministry said in a press briefing on Thursday. The decision came in response to reports of China using Galwan soldier as the Olympic torch bearer. India's foreign ministry spokesperson Arindam Bakshi said it is regrettable that the Chinese side chose to politicize an event like the Olympics. People's Liberation Army Regiment Commander Key Fabio, who was involved in the June 2020 border clash with Indian soldiers in Galwan Valley, was chosen by the Chinese government to carry the Winter Olympic torch in Wednesday's torch relay. The Winter Olympics will open on Friday with more than a dozen world leaders including Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan attending the event. The Galwan Valley clash was one of the deadliest such incidents which resulted in the death of 20 Indian soldiers and at least four Chinese soldiers. Uh, yes, we have seen um, the reports on this issue. It is indeed regrettable uh, that the Chinese side has chosen to politi- politicize an event like the Olympics. Uh, I wish to inform that our charge de affairs of the embassy of India in Beijing will not be attending the opening or the closing ceremony of the Beijing 22 Winter Olympics. The United States has said that it does not endorse India's opposition Congress party leader Rahul Gandhi's contention that Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's foreign policy strengthened the Pakistan-China relationship and that it was for the countries in question to speak for themselves. Rahul Gandhi on Wednesday hit out at the government in the parliament over its foreign policy decisions which he alleged have brought China and Pakistan together against India. eliciting a sharp response from foreign minister S J Shankar who said perhaps he needs some history lessons when asked for his remarks on whether pakistan has come close to china after feeling abandoned by the us state department spokesperson ned price in his daily press briefing said it is not requirement for any country to choose between the united states and china i i will leave it to the pakistanis and the prc to speak to their uh relationship i i i uh, certainly would not um uh would not endorse uh those remarks in news from pakistan the international monetary fund has revived a stalled funding program for pakistan and cleared 1 billion us dollars tranche after islamabad gave complete autonomy to the country's central bank and took around 800 billion rupees tax measures This comes as Pakistan has been grappling with a record high inflation and a widening current account deficit. The International Monetary Fund or IMF said its executive board approved for 1 billion US dollars disbursement to Pakistan on Wednesday after completing a sixth review of the country's reforms under a 6 billion US dollars loan program. Pakistan's GDP growth is expected to reach 4% this year, but its economy remains vulnerable to flare-ups of COVID-19, tighter international financial conditions, a rise in geopolitical tensions, and delayed implementations of structural reforms, the IMF said. Pakistan's finance minister Shaukat Tareen said that he was pleased by the decision. He said the current program should be enough if Pakistan starts generating growth of 5% balanced growth. There is no need for another IMF program local media reported Opposition leaders including PPP vice president Sheikh Rahman however slammed the government for celebrating as a country grapples with record high inflation and a widening current account deficit 
This comes after Pakistan government last month passed a mid-year budget to meet IMF conditions and agreed to take nearly 800 billion rupees measures through a combination of card and expenditures and imposition of about 500 billion rupees in taxes, including rupees 20 per litre fuel tax, reports suggest. Moving on, Mutahida Qaumi Movement MQM founder leader Altaf Hussain criticized Pakistan's military establishment and spy agency Inter-Services Intelligence or ISI and blamed them for interfering in the politics of Pakistan as he appeared in a London court this week for hearing in a hate speech case. Hussain was charged with a terrorism offence in the UK in 2019 in connection with his speech relayed to followers in Pakistan in 2016 that allegedly encouraged violence. Speaking to reporters, Hussein blamed ISI for its role in the case because he is struggling for the rights of Mohajir community in Pakistan. Even from exile in London, Hussein has been a vocal critic of Pakistan's military and often blames it for using force to muzzle dissenting voices in the country. और वो बताने वाली एक ही इंटेलिजेंस एजेंसी है जिसका नाम आईएसआई है a bakery owner in Afghanistan has been handing out free bread for years in capital Kabul but said he has noticed an increase in poverty since the Taliban take over last week UN secretary general Antonio Guterres told the security council that Afghanistan is hanging by a thread with millions in the country suffering from extreme hunger Dozens of people gathered outside a bakery in central Kabul earlier this week with the hope of receiving a free loaf of bread. It comes amid warnings last week from UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres to the Security Council that Afghanistan is hanging by a thread, with millions in the country suffering from extreme hunger. Hamina, a 14-year-old girl from Kunduz province, said, it has been tough to make ends meet with her father working as a market porter and her mother sick at home. Fifty-eight-year-old bakery owner Meher Dil Khan Ramati has been handing out free bread for about three years, but said he has noticed an increase in poverty since the Taliban take over. Before the Taliban swept Afghanistan, he said about 500 people would wait outside his shop each day. But now there are days where as many as 2,000 try to get a free loaf. His service is entirely donation-based, so the amount of bread he hands out varies from day to day. Uh, در حدود 5000 الى 10000 نان ما پخت میکنیم و روزایی که مردم به این مردم که کمک میکنه اضافه تر میشه از بیشتر ما پخت میکنیم ساعت دیگه ایرا تا 8 شب الى 10 شب ما نان پخت میکنیم به مردم Last month, the United Nations appealed for 4.4 billion US dollars in humanitarian aid for Afghanistan in 2022. In January 26, it said it needed a further 3.6 billion US dollars for health and education, basic infrastructure, promotion of livelihoods and social cohesion, specifically the needs of women and girls. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka signed a 500 million US dollars credit line with India to import fuel on Wednesday as the island nation seeks to stave off rolling power cuts amid an economic crisis that has hampered purchases of diesel for power plants. Sri Lanka signed a $500 million credit line with India to import fuel on Wednesday, officials said, as the island nation seeks to stave off rolling power cuts amid a foreign exchange crisis that has hampered purchases of diesel for power plants. Sri Lanka will pay London Interbank offer rate or LIBOR plus 1.25% for the credit line, which will have a one-year tenure and can be subsequently renewed, Energy Minister Udaya Gamanpilla said. 
The government hopes to kick off 565,000 metric tons of import from the first week of March and expects six petrol shipments and 10 diesel shipments. Sri Lanka is struggling with its worst financial crisis in the years with reserves hitting $3.1 billion in December. The country has to repay about $4 billion in debt repayments this year. It expects to receive another $1 billion credit line from India to purchase essential goods, including food and medicine. By the end of February or early March, Finance Minister Basil Rajapaksa said, in total, Rajapaksa said Sri Lanka will need $30 billion for imports and debt repayments in 2022. Rising global oil prices have worsened Sri Lanka's economic problems with spending on oil imports climbing to about $500 million per month. Sri Lanka and India began negotiations over the credit line to import fuel last August. The Hokarsar wetland in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir supports various ecological and economic services and also regulates regional climate. On the occasion of World Wetland Day, celebrated every year on 2nd of February, local authorities organized a function to spread awareness about the conservation and protection of the wetlands in the region. The Hokarsar wetland situated on the outskirts of Srinagar city in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir is an important refuge for migratory birds and trans-Himalayan species during winters. It also acts as one of the water absorption basins saving the region from floods. However, unbated siltation, pollution and encroachments are taking a heavy toll on Horkarsa wetland which has now shrunk against its original area. On the occasion of World Wetland Day, celebrated every year on 2nd of February, a function was organized by the authorities with an aim to highlight the importance of actions to ensure conservation and sustainable use of valley wetlands. They need to be stopped as soon as possible. क्योंकि ये एक दिशा ये जो वेटलैंड्स होते हैं एक तरह से किडनी का ये जो किडनी का काम करते हैं फॉर वाटर फिल्ट्रेशन तो हमें इन चीजों को बचाना चाहिए वरना हम इन फ्यूचर में एक बड़ी ऐसी मतलब डिजास्टर को फेस करेंगे जो कि मतलब हमारे पीने का पानी भी खराब हो सकता है। The Hokarsar wetlands was known as the queen of wetlands owing to its immense ecological value. Authorities are now taking all the measures to save the wetlands and protect them. A food joint in Indian capital, New Delhi, has introduced a one-of-a-kind challenge for all food lovers. It is offering a prize money of 71,000 rupees, that is 948 US dollars, to those who finish a 10-feet long South Indian dish dosa in 40 minutes. A restaurant in the Indian capital, New Delhi, is wooing customers by offering price money of 71,000 rupees, that is 948 US dollars, to those who finish a 10 feet long South Indian dish dosa in 40 minutes. Sridhar Kumar, the owner of Shakti Sagar restaurant, said he wanted more customers to visit his restaurant. So he came up with the idea of the challenge to finish the dish for the price money. Kumar said, about 25 people have participated in the challenge so far, but no one has won it. The cost of the dosa is 1500 rupees. Surinder Gupta, a local who accepted the challenge on Tuesday, said he thought he would finish the entire dosa in this stipulated time but it became impossible for him to finish it alone. This time there was a competition, so I thought that I would win in 71,000 rupees. So I was thinking that I would finish it completely. So I didn't finish it completely. So I won the competition completely. So I won the competition. Dosa, a crisp, wafer-thin rice flour pancake stuffed with vegetables too, is a popular South Indian dish taken as breakfast or dinner across the country. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.